Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. Today I'm going to show you how to make an American Chinese restaurant classic. Sweet and sour pork, but without all of the excess breading. I don't know about you, but when I order sweet and sour pork or chicken, I end up getting more breading than meat. So let's turn the tables on this classic dish and make it with more meat than breading. It's easy to do and very delicious. So let's get started. Let's get started by making the batter, which is also going to be a marinade for the pork. In a large bowl, combine soy sauce with Shaoxing Chinese wine, toasted sesame oil, water, white pepper, baking soda, and baking powder. And give it a good mix until everything's well combined. And then add flour and cornstarch. And then give it all a good mix until it's smooth like pancake batter. And now I'm adding pork loin that I've cut into bite-sized pieces. And then give it a good mix with your hands for maximum deliciousness. Once all the pork is thoroughly coated with the batter, let it marinate for about 15 to 20 minutes. While the pork is marinating, let's make our sweet and sour sauce. I'm using a wok, you can use a pan or a skillet, it doesn't really matter. Add water, white vinegar, white sugar, ketchup, give it a good mix, turn the heat up to high, and bring it up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, add sliced carrots and let them simmer for two minutes or a little bit longer if you like softer vegetables. And then add bite-sized pieces of yellow onion and bell pepper. Give it a good mix and let everything simmer for another two minutes. Or once again, if you like softer vegetables, let them simmer for just a little bit longer. Now I'm going to add a small can of pineapple with the juice. If you have fresh pineapple, that's even better. Now to thicken the sauce a bit, I'm going to add a little cornstarch slurry, which is equal parts water and cornstarch. Now give it a good mix until the sauce thickens, and it should almost immediately thicken. You can make the sauce as thick or as thin as you like. If you want it thicker, add more slurry. If you want it thinner, add less. And now for the final and totally optional ingredient, red food coloring to give it that magical red color you see in Chinese restaurants that does absolutely nothing for the dish besides make it look pretty. Now give it one final mix and set it aside and keep it warm. And now back to the pork. It's been marinating and now it's ready to fry. I have my oil preheated to 350 degrees and now I'm going to add the pork. And now let the pork deep fry for two and a half to three minutes or until golden brown and cooked through. Once the pork is nice and golden brown, I'm going to remove it and drain it on a wire rack. And you do not want to drain on paper towels, otherwise that beautiful golden brown crust you have is going to become soggy. Now repeat this process until all your pork is fried and golden brown. Now when you mix the sauce with the pork, you want to be ready to eat right then. You do not want to mix it too soon, otherwise all that crust is going to become soggy. So in a large bowl, add some pork and some sauce, give it a good mix, and serve immediately. And there you have it. Sweet and sour pork, better than in a Chinese restaurant, with more meat than breading. Serve it on top of a bed of rice and you're ready to eat. The flavor of the pork was phenomenal from the marinade and batter. It was crispy on the outside and moist and tender on the inside. And the sauce was absolutely perfect for me and my family. Not too sweet, not too sour. Or if you like it more sweet or more sour, you can always add more sugar or more vinegar to suit your taste. But you gotta be careful that you don't overpower your sweet and sour. If you come here for the corny phrases and bad dad jokes, you just got your money's worth. I'll be here all week, people, so please remember to stop by. 
Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.